everyone, DJM with DigitalDJTips.com. Lately, tablets and touchscreen devices have become all the rage, whether it's a tablet or a smartphone. Uh, there's been a lot of great apps that have come out nowadays that allow you to turn your touch device into a MIDI control. I'm going to talk about today Touch OSC, and one of the big reasons I want to get into this one is because it's very customizable, which is something a lot of the other apps that have popped up out there haven't really fully addressed. With Touch OSC, you can use one of their device, one of their uh, mappings or layouts, or you can create your own. Now we're going to get into actual creation of your own layouts in the next video, but today I'm simply going to get into how to hook this thing up and make it work with your computer because. While you know it looks simple, it was the first time I know it was a very difficult. So I'm going to show you, we're going to get into it, and thus you'll have an easier time. And it's good to know this even if you build your own custom layout so you can then connect up those with your computer. So why don't we get to the computer here and I'll show you how to hook it up. Okay, getting started, you're going to first need to download and install a couple things both in your mobile device and on your laptop or desktop. First off, you of course need the Touch OSC app for Android or iOS. Second, you're going to need a piece of freeware called Pure Data. What Pure Data is going to do is work with this file here, the basic.pd file that Touch OSC will give you. And this is simply to serve the purpose of connecting your mobile device to your computer so it can send data back and forth. And last but not least, you're going to need MIDI connection software, whether it's Open Sound Control, MIDI Bridge, Line 6 Mo MIDI Mobilizer, or core MIDI. This is what will take the data signals coming and turn it into MIDI signals that your basically your weapon of choice can translate. So first off, we'll open up the Pure Data program. That's Windows. And when you see it, it looks like a typical programming mess, but it really only serves the purpose of running the basic.pd file. So we'll open that up next. And what you'll see here is a very simple setup, but it serves its purpose. The important part is right here, this connect spot. That's where you're going to need to put in the IP address of your mobile device. Now to figure that out, you're going to go into the Touch OSC app, and you'll see here your main settings. Right here are your connections and layout. Layout is where you're going to pick whatever layout that you, of controls you're going to have show up on your phone. And when we get into the custom uh, controls in the next video, you'll understand then where your control settings will set up. But for now, we just want to connect. So first, you're going to go up here to this OSC and basically turn it on. And in here, you're going to see right here your local IP address. This is the IP address of your mobile device. In my case, this is the IP address of my iPhone. Up here in this host is where you're going to put the IP address of your computer or your laptop, whatever you have. Now, it might come easily, like when you go to the MIDI bridge settings, you know, mine just shows up right here, thankfully. But if it doesn't, then you're going to have to get your IP address from, you know, from the computer, whether you're on a Mac or a PC. If you need help uh, getting on there, I will have it in the article, how to get your IP address. Basically, you'd put in here the IP address of the computer. And you'd have to do the same, of course, with the OSC. Put it right up here. Now, with those turned on, you then would take this IP address, and you're going to have to put it into the basic.pd. To do that, you go to Edit and go to Edit Mode. Now you're able to click here and edit this. So let's put in mine. mistake there. Now then, we then turn off edit mode, so it's right there. Now the next step, let me move this down a little bit so you can see the after effect, is to press, is to literally press this like a button. Pardon me while I turn on the app on my phone. So we press this like a button, and then at that point, I'd say move your crossfader around, or something. If you see all this if you see all this happening, then basically that means that data is being sent and received. 
Now, the next step, of course, is to turn on the uh, touch your whatever your connection software is. In my case, it would be the MIDI bridge. Now, I will forewarn you, at least on my laptop, for some odd reason, it will shut itself off. On my desktop here, it doesn't. So sometimes you might have to do it a couple of times or turn it on and off, play with it. It's not perfect. Okay, we got everything up and running. Let's see how we did. Let's go to our weapon of choice, in my case, tractor. We'll go into the settings. Let me bring that over here. We of course want to go to controller manager. Let's add a new generic MIDI. And right now let's just add in the crossfader and see if it worked. So I'll move this over so we can see the crossfader right here. Press learn. And there you go. Right now I'm moving the crossfader on the iPhone and it's controlling tractor. And from there, you can pretty much just put in anything else, all your, all your faders, your controllers, anything. Now, in the end, I don't know if I would tell someone to put the whole thing in here, just because especially on a smartphone, that's going to be a lot. I'd probably tell you to take the James Zabiella route and use this as an added bonus, something to control your effects, something to add a little ooh or ah, or especially, especially if you have a custom built uh, control setup you want to do let's say for some kind of wild controllerism type of thing and there you have it the first time is always the hardest but after that it gets pretty easy every time you have to hook up your device stay tuned for part two where we're going to get into how to make your own layouts and thus integrate them with your dj software of choice and be sure to tune in to digitaldjtips.com for more info and as well as links to download the pieces of software talked about today